Let us say amen. 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 As we stand on this morning, we ask you to turn your attention to the book of Jeremiah, a book that our journey of a lifetime has us rolling up on, the book of Jeremiah. I want you to dig deep into that book, into the 20th chapter, chapter 20. I just want to lift up one verse of scripture from the book of Jeremiah, Old Testament prophet. Amen. It comes right after Isaiah. Uh -huh. Amen. Chapter 20, and in the middle of that verse is a beautiful pericope of scripture that is pregnant with preaching possibilities. And it's verse 9. Jeremiah chapter 20 and verse 9. When you have it saved, man. Amen. Amen. The King James Version of that Holy Writ says thusly, Then I said, I will not make mention. Did I give you the right address, 20 and 9? Yes. Yes. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, yes, sir. nor speak any more in his name. Uh -huh. Period. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak in his name, period. One more time. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak in his name, period. Then the word appears, but his word was in my heart as a burning fire yeah. shut up in my bones oh, yeah. and I was weary with forbearing and I could not stay so read it, the ninth verse of the 20th chapter you say what does it say he said then I said I will not make mention of him nor speak of his name. Period. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I was weary with forbearing and I could not stay. Gracious God our Father, give us preaching prophets. In the name of Jesus. In the midst of this warm weather, let your people stay awake. We rebuke the spirit of tiredness and sleep. The spirit of busyness. Movement that would interrupt your word from reaching its assigned places and people. Use your servant. Yes, to yes. stand to glorify you. Yes, Heavenly Father. And Lord, we will be careful to make sure we let them know that the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of God is everlasting and eternal. Amen. Amen. In a conversation on yesterday with Pastor Widow. Most of you are familiar with him. You know him. Oh, yeah. The Lord began to change what I had planned to talk about. Oh, Lord. I wanted to preach from the first chapter of Jeremiah. Uh -huh. I thank God that he's allowed me to walk through this book a few times. and I was familiar with where he dropped me off. And if I had any question of whether I should change and be obedient to the Lord, I got home. And I'll tell you, it's been a difficult year already. Yes, sir. Lord God. Seems like every fight I get in, I'm losing. Oh. I went upstairs and I still have to, Brother Gray, 
lie in a hospital bed every once in a while. Yes, sir. The blessing is that we still have it there at the home. Yeah. Yeah. And as I was there in a prone position, I heard someone coming up the steps, uh -huh. Sister Hodge, and she says, are you okay? And my automatic response is, yeah. She says, no, really, are you okay? And I mustered up as much truth as I could. I said, I don't know. Mm -hmm. She said, I believe you're depressed. Mm -hmm. Jesus. And I knew right then that where the Lord wanted me to go, because when I was talking with Pastor Whitter, well, he had had surgery and he's been through some things. Mm -hmm. yes. When my pastor fell asleep in the Lord, his pastor fell asleep uh -huh. in the Lord, because we had the same pastor. Yes. And he says to me yesterday, he says, I've been praying and asking God, should I continue preaching? He said, I know I'm supposed to teach. He said, but it's getting harder for me to get a message from the Lord. Yeah, y'all would understand that your job is to receive and believe. Ours is to prepare and proclaim. So I understood what he was saying, and I said to him this, just as quick as I could. I said, go study Jeremiah, the first 20 chapters. Yes. And when I rose in the bed and Sister Hodges spoke to me, God said, take your own advice. Oh. And therefore, we're in this 20th chapter of Jeremiah. Am I clear? Yes. And, and here's the tag he gave me. Watch this. How did I get here? Every once in a while for the child of God, there are some questions that will permeate your spirit, man and woman. And the question will be very clear. How did I get here? How did I arrive at the place that I find myself at today? It didn't seem like I would be here when I started this journey. Am I at anybody's house right now? It seemed like it was going to be a much better, smoother transition. When I engaged the opportunity, it seemed like it would be more formidable. It would be easier to love people. But how? Did I get here? The, 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 the prophet Isaiah had, had said what he did, and now Jeremiah comes in 20 chapters in, and I hear him saying, how did I get here? Yeah. How, how did I arrive at this very difficult place? Yeah. This morning, if I wasn't solid in where I was going to stay, I got a phone call from a beloved woman in Cleveland. A woman, when I was at my worst, God made her her best. Right. And she was the facilitator of a program to which I had to go to because my life was out of order. Yeah. A program where I learned 12 steps of recovery. A program where I learned more about me than you will ever know about me. That God revealed, took the layers off of me and showed me who I really was. I thank God for the 30-year journey that I've been on since that day. And I remember when I got to treatment, I met Annie, and one of the questions I asked is, how did I get here? How did a can of beer ride with my friends as an 11th grader wind up with a crack addiction at the age of the How? How, how, how did I get here? How did my life spin so far? Or how did a man with a degree, a loving mother and father, family that was support? How did I get here? And when I talked to Annie Stevens today, she called. It's 5.30 in the morning here. She's in Cleveland. It's 8.30. She says, what time do your service start? I said, 11. She said, oh, that's just a I said, no, Annie. I'm in California. It's 5 30. She said, What are you doing up? I said, Waiting on this call. Ah. You missed what I said. I said, I'm waiting on this call. I, I, I'm getting ready to help somebody. Remember what I said? I'm waiting on what? Oh. Amen. Oh. Well, watch, watch this. Yes, yes. We all learn or will learn to deal with some discouragement, yes. some struggles. Yes. Yeah. Some disappointment, yeah. some despair, some disillusionment. I, I, I know the old saying is, when life deals you lemons, make lemonade. Oh, but sometimes, yeah. baby, you don't have sugar nor water. You just got to take it for what it is. Do I hear anybody saying yeah. amen? Every once in a while, don't tell me them cute little things. Because I ain't got no sugar or no water. So uh, sometimes we got to take life as God has dealt it to us and deal with life 
on life's terms. But, 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 but see, here's what I want you to understand. Even in the life of the Christian, well, we will have some disappointment. Oh, yeah. I, I, I know that's why folk yeah. don't come to church anymore because they signed up for a Christian life that was a bed of roses and, and God was going to give them two chicken legs, a chicken breast, and some wings. Uh, we wanted to pass on the thighs because they were a little greasy. But, but every once in a while, you won't even have the broth. Sometimes the Christian yeah. life comes with nothing, nothing but hope. Yes, and I want to tell you, when you have nothing but hope, you got all you need. Hope is the rope that keeps me connected yeah. to the God of my understanding. Yeah. Uh, in the Christian life, you will have some disappointment. In society, you will, come here, have some disappointments. Yeah. In your homes, you will have some, help me preach this, disappointment. Yeah. In our marriage, unfortunately, Sister Ha, there will be some times you will have some disappointment. Y'all yeah. mad at me already. On your job, uh, you will have some. Uh, yeah. uh, 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 in the church, you will have some. Yeah. In ourselves, we will have some. Yeah. I've been working feverishly to try to handle some Yes sir. yes sir, yes sir. Jeremiah, Jeremiah, Jeremiah yeah. is a man who has been appointed by God. Yeah. Not only appointed, but he's also been anointed. Yeah. It means he's the Holy One of God, assigned for the time to which God called. He has an assignment. Yeah. I, I, I want to ask real quick, does anybody up in here have an assignment yeah. from the Lord. But, 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 but even with his assignment, he shows up in this 20th chapter disappearing. Well, now. He's discouraged and he's ready to throw in the towel. Uh -huh. Not only is he ready, he has submitted a letter of resignation. He let God know that I've resigned my post. You don't have to fire me, God. I, I, I resign. Every once in a while, I, I don't want to wait for God to terminate the contract. I just want to resign. Yes, I, I ain't got no help. Y'all play too much like y'all. I, I got some of y'all resignations in my phone. You better go. Well, you all ready to send me a text message saying I won't be there today. Y'all mad at me already. Uh, he sent God a resignation. Unless we judge Jeremiah too harshly, I dare to suggest that someone named Anthony, last name I, has thought about tendering a resignation also. Uh, I, I, I know it, it doesn't affect you, but every once in a while, the disappointment in the household of faith, it affects me. Yeah. yeah, Jeremiah is a preacher, he's a prophet, and he even has passion. But Jeremiah has so much passion, he was referred to as a weeping prophet. Oh, Every once in a while, the passion oh, will cause you to cry. Oh, yeah. Somebody said, I have to cry sometimes. Oh, yeah. Huh? Oh, yeah. yeah. Every once in a while, my Bible says, Shade, that weeping yeah. may endure yeah. for a night. But child, yeah. coming, if I can hold out, to the morning. Yeah. Every once in a while, morning seems too far. Yeah. Every once in a while, I'm like, Jeremiah, I got a resignation. Yeah. And I want God to accept my resignation. Yeah. He had a great desire to do well for the Lord. Yet we find him not only quitting, but saying, I won't even mention your name, Lord. Wow. Even though Jeremiah is a preacher, yes, a prophet with passion, he has a prophet. Yes. Yeah. Every once in a while, your passion might become your problem. Uh -huh. Every once in a while, my passion for God's people yeah. becomes my problem. Yeah. Every once in a while, my passion for my children, yeah. help me, Holy Spirit, yeah. becomes my problem. Yeah. Y'all ain't going to help me up in here. Yeah. Every once in a while, my passion for life, as it begins to look like it's dwindling in front of me, yeah. it becomes my problem. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This text, we look at the preacher, and he begins to understand 
that this thing has become a problem. Yeah. How, 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 how did Jeremiah get here? I'm glad you asked. We don't just arrive at the place of resignation. Not most of us anyway. The text suggests by the word then that something must have occurred. Okay. The, the word then is in the text because it says then. Somebody right now, you're standing on the precipice of your thing. Resignation in hand and you're just waiting to then. Am I clear in anybody's bed? The text said then. That means some stuff that happened. I said then I said I had enough for it. Then I said, leave me alone. Then I said, don't push me because I'm close to the edge. I'm trying not to. <laughs> then. 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 Somebody just say it when we say then. 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 then is where the church members find themselves in. Then the pandemic. Yeah. Then, then the gas ran out. Then, yeah. then we moved. Then, then I didn't like what was going on at the church. Then something occurs and Jeremiah is there. You may not want to know, but inquiring minds do want to know. Yeah. As a pastor, preacher, teacher who has found myself standing at the moment of then, I wanted to know, Jeremiah, how did you get here? Anybody else want to know, how do I did he get here? If you still have your Bibles, if we can do some Bible thumping real quick, I'll be here. But turn your Bible back to chapter 1 of Jeremiah. First thing I witnessed in the text, Jeremiah says to me, come here hard, I'll tell you how I got here. He says, my calling is a struggle. Yeah. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. The calling, Deacon Hart, to be a father can become a struggle. Mm -hmm. Sister Hart, the calling to be a wife can become a struggle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Deacon Hart, the calling to be a deacon can become a struggle. Well, oh, yeah. Where do you see it? I'm glad you asked. Look at the text, verse 4 of chapter 1. What is the, what's the first word you say? Yeah. Then. Yeah. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. I ordained thee a prophet unto the nation. What is the next word? Yeah. Then said I, Ah. Oh. That small word in the original language means great, excruciating pain and suffering. He realized when God dropped off an assignment, it came with some pain and suffering. I need about 10 of y'all and I'll make 11 to say amen. Some of the assignments I've had, ah, they came with pain and suffering. Sometimes standing here while you sleep, ah, it brings me to pain to work all week and folk get on the prayer line. Ah, it takes me to pain and suffering. Look what he said. The Lord God, behold, I cannot speak for I am a child. Then the Lord interrupts our excuse. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all and I, that I shall send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Yeah. He hears the good news. Thank you, Lord. Verse 8. Be not afraid of their faces, <laughs> for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. Yeah. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words mm -hmm. in thy mouth. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Even with all of this assurance, my calling is a struggle. The problem here is 
Jeremiah is called to tell God's people not just about comfort and salvation. He must inform them about the critical evaluation that God is taking on the nation of Israel. He must let them know that God has a watchful eye. And God is not pleased with the behaviors they demonstrate. Y'all need to pay attention here. Yeah. Uh, I know I'm in Israel, but I'm on the way to Rodeo. Uh, he says that, that what you're doing, I am not pleased with it. He puts the words in the man of God's mouth to tell the people of God that it is time for the people of God to move in a new way. He's letting them know I have a standard to which I will not relinquish. I have some designs that I won't change. I know we live in a world where that's not not a good thing to say. Okay, let me bother you this morning. Pastor A.A.K. Hodge, the dilemma is that too many church folk are celebrating sin and not challenging ourselves to be more like the sun. I know it's warm in here, but it's warmer in hell than it is in I, I, I realized that when Annie called today, she reminded me, she said, what did we used to call you when you were in treatment? And I said, Annie, you remember? She said, no, tell me. I said, the lying wonder. That was my name because anything I said, they didn't have to wonder I was lying. I didn't want to be around them. I wasn't like them. I was a unique addict. I, I didn't have the problems they did. I had a college degree. I had a family that loved me. I didn't have their issues. I had two pair of shoes and a pair of jeans that wasn't tore up. I wasn't as bad as they were. Yet I had to put pull-ups on them because I didn't have any weight. I probably weighed about 145 pounds. And with a head this large, you know the body was almost dead. I was standing there, and she was looking at me, and I was looking at her. And she said, boy, it looked like you've been smoking dope out of a tree trunk. She said, you got the audacity to act like you okay. And I just looked at her, and I said, said to myself, ugly as you is, you don't need to be talking about me. Mine toe up. Somebody said toe up. And that's how we get sometimes. Folk come to help us and we doing the evaluation on them. I looked like death sucking on a lifesaver and the flavor was all out of it and had the audacity to wonder, why was I here? Sometimes when you come to church and ain't nobody here, just thank God you made it here. I understand what Annie said today, but that same mouth that told lies, now God has put a call on my life. I have been changed. You remember what he did to Isaiah? In the sixth chapter, he got an angel, and the angel went to the fire, took the coal off, and purged his mouth. Every time I stand up, I stand up with a live coal, and if you allow it to touch your lip, lying folk will become folk that God can use to proclaim this word. I know I'm telling the truth about it. I'm glad that God has the ability to make a difference. Jeremiah was letting me know that when you stand and talk like that, people ain't going to like you. Okay. Okay. Uh. When, when you take a stand for the Lord and one against the world, Sister Chiller, folk ain't going to like you. Yeah. When you stand and tell folk what God loves is true and what the world moves on are a series of lies, yeah. folk ain't going to like you. Yeah. When you take a stand against homosexuality, same-sex marriages, closet homosexuality, and I tell them God sees you, yeah. folk ain't going to like you. Yeah. When you stand against premarital sex, no bed, no bed. Yeah. Folk ain't gonna like you. When you stand against lying and cheating, gossiping, backbite, tell bear, folk ain't gonna like you. When you stand against adultery and tell adulterous preachers that they go into hell if they don't repent, folk ain't gonna like you. When you stand and tell folk that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is still eternal life, folk ain't gonna like you. When you tell young boys to pull up their pants, folk ain't going to like you. When you tell old women to keep their dresses down, folk ain't going to like you. When you tell them to put them blunts out, quit getting them medical marijuana car, folk ain't going to like you. When you tell deadbeat dads to take care of their kids, folk ain't going to like you. When you tell women to quit having children until they marry, when you tell folk get a job, when you tell men to love your wife, when you tell the wife to obey her husband, when you tell parents quit being afraid of your children, 
be their parent and not their partner. Folk ain't gonna like you. When you tell them to say no to abortion because it is life, folk ain't gonna. Like when you tell them to stop shacking up, I realize people are not gonna like it. So my calling is a struggle. But can I stop and be a blessing to somebody right here? Like Jeremiah's calling is a struggle. I pondered over the conversations that landed me here. Nathan Paul wrestling with his purpose and Sister Hodge wrestling with her partner. Renita trying to tell me that I'm struggling. And I could hear the voice of Brianna Lachey Viner saying, and the struggle is real. I understand that more today than I did before. But let me help you turn your Bible quickly to Romans the 8th chapter. I know you know verse 28, but I'm going to go a little further, and then we're going to get this first point. This is the long one. The rest of my promise you are short. Romans 8, starting at verse number 28. Watch the text. It says, and we know that all things work together for good to, watch the word, to them, say it with me, say them, that love God, and to them, say it with me, who are called according to his purpose. Verse 29 goes further. It says, for whom he did foreknow. That, that, that means the Lord only calls those he already knows. Yeah. God only calls those who have ears to hear, yeah. hands to do, yeah. and a mind to obey. Yeah. Let me help just one person. Every once in a while, you ought to be able to identify yourself with this text. Yeah. Only call those things which belong to you. I ain't going to look up for somebody can make this mad. Quit calling those things which belong to somebody else. Quit taking text messages from somebody that belongs to somebody else. Let me get back to the text. For whom the Father did foreknow, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son. Oh, yeah. That we might be the first born among many brethren. Yeah. Watch verse 30. I promise you I'm getting ready to move to my second point. Verse 30 says this. Moreover whom he did predestine. Yeah. Them. Say it with me. Them. Yeah. He also called. Uh -huh. Somebody say called. Call. And whom he called. Yeah. Them. He also justified. Yeah. And whom he justified. Yeah. Them. He also glorified. Okay, you don't get it. But I'm stopping here to tell you I am one of them. Them he also called. Call is what he did. Call is what Annie did this morning. So that I can try to paint a picture for you. Watch this. Come here, George. George Andrew Huntley. Come here. <laughs> Come here. The whole man. See, when I called you, it's because I knew you could hear me. When I called you, why did you come? Because I called you. Watch this. Why didn't they come? Because I didn't call. So I knew before you got here this morning that I was going to call you. Y'all gonna get this in a minute. I knew that I was going to call you, and I knew you were going to come. Y'all missed what I said. I knew I could call you because I knew you would be where you were supposed to be. Some folk you can't call them because they never where they're supposed to be. Some folk won't come when you call them because I'm on the way to my next point. My calling is a struggle. My next point is this congregation is stubborn. Some folk are called, but they won't come because they stuck. Some folk can't come. Have a seat right there. You can stay up here for the day. I want you to understand that, that God prepares you before he calls you. I'm trying to tell you, anybody that go to the restaurant, they have prepared a place before you get there. 
They've already got the beef hanging. It's been aged for 40 days. The, the, the chef has already gotten it marinated. He's already seasoned it before you show up. Am I clear up in here? God has already prepared you before you got here. This is why he said he prepared a place for you. Yeah. In the presence of the anointed, my, my cup, when God has prepared a place for you, you'll know it for there's an abundance there. Because I called you, you yeah. come. Nobody else was coming because God didn't call them. He came because he heard my voice. Yeah. And he said, my sheep, my sheep. no my voice. Yeah. And a stranger, they won't hearken there unto. Because God foreknew you. Yeah. He knew that he could use Jeremiah for his purpose. Yeah. He says, Jeremiah, before you entered the womb of your mother, mm -hmm. I ordained you. Mm -hmm. I want you to know there's nothing too hard for God. Amen. But neither is there anything, listen to me, too hard for God's people. Amen. Why? Because he prepared you he before he purposed Amen. you. God's plan was in effect before you got here. Amen. Jeremiah, before you met Ed and Spur, already had a purpose for you. Not only is the problem that I find with Jeremiah is his calling is a struggle. Yeah. But I gave you the second point already. Turn your Bible to chapter 9 mm -hmm. and verse 2. And it says, Oh, that I had in the wilderness a lodging place of wayfaring men that I might leave my people and go from them, for they all be adulterers. An assembly of treacherous men. And they bend their tongues like bows for lies. But they are not valiant for the truth upon the earth. For they proceed from evil to evil. They know not me, saith the Lord. Yeah. Take ye heed every one of his neighbor. And trust ye not in any brother. For every brother will utterly supplant, trick you, trap you, and every neighbor will walk with slander. Huh. Watch it, verse 5. And they will deceive everyone his neighbor Jesus. and will not speak truth. Oh. My congregation, Jeremiah says, is stubborn. Huh. There are some points that you have to figure out where you at in this congregation. <laughs> Jeremiah was dealing with treacherous folks. Yeah. He's disappointed. I hear Jeremiah ask the Lord, why me? Why do you have me here with these people? Well, they don't listen. They're hard-headed. They're sneaky. They're lying. Yeah. Jeremiah states they are treacherous. Yeah. In today's vernacular, Jeremiah would be saying they're ratchet. I got stuck right there with a stubborn congregation. Yes. Folk who have made up their mind yes. to follow their desires and not God's desires. Yes. Anybody in here have enough understanding? Sister Hodge, thank you. We were talking about Imani today. Imani is my grandbaby in Detroit. We went to the Congress of Christian Education. Yeah. We told Danielle, bring him on if we want to keep her. We're down in the basement. There's all kind of stuff. If you've been there, you know all of the books and yeah. everything is there. And Imani saw the little ice cream and popcorn. Man, I want this. You ain't getting it. She laid down on the floor. Lord, Lord. <laughs> I didn't want to get arrested. I didn't want to have to get Sister Hodge out of jail. I said, come on, let's walk. She did a sit-up and she saw us walking. She got up, she ran, got between us and laid down again. 
And she said, I want this. We ain't say nothing. We kept walking. And finally, she got it. She ran and took our hands and started swinging and doing little flip. <laughs> but I'm asking you this is, do you have as much sense as a yes. four-year-old? Oh, my. She wanted to be stubborn. Yes. But when she realized that things were going to move on, whether yes. she came or not, she yes. got up and got it on. Yes. Uh, the, my calling is a struggle. Yes. My congregation is stuck. Now, you have a part to play in that That's you right. can quit being Stubborn. stuck. Yeah. And, and, and watch this. Because that wasn't the end of the problem for him, Deacon Hunter. Turn with me to Jeremiah 16 and 12. Verse 2 says, Thou shalt not take thee a wife, neither shalt thou have sons or daughters in this place. So not only was his calling a struggle, uh -huh. and somebody you're calling for what God has placed you to do, you're struggling. And then the folk you're supposed to work with, oh, praise God, they're stuck. I'm working on the festival that God knows they almost grew in Africa, dealing with all of the shenanigans, stuff. But I thank God that I'm able to come and depend on Zion Hill Amen. because people just get stuck and they want to do things their way. Yeah, yeah. But but here he says not only is the congregation stubborn, but the course is straight. Yeah. The, the, the course of life when you're trying to navigate it by yourself, and even sometimes with folk who are willing to go with you, it is difficult. The yeah. course of life is strenuous. He yeah. even says this in in Jeremiah 12 and 6. For even thy brethren in thy house of thy father, even they have dealt treacherously with thee. Yea, they have called the multitude after thee. Believe them not, though they speak fair words unto thee. Sometimes we have to understand that the course of work, our assignment is going to be mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. straight. Say strength. strength. That means tough. It's not going to be easy. And then I hear him say, and you asking me how that's why I quit. This calling a struggle. The congregation stubborn. My course is strenuous. Remember he's in chapter 19. He's in stocks and bonds. They blocked him up. Got his head in the thing. His hands there. The course is strenuous. Being a Christian in America today yeah. is a difficult task. Amen. Being a member of an intimate congregation yeah. where you get more assignments than thank yous uh -huh. is a difficult task. Can I tell you something, my brothers and sisters? This is a hodgism. I would rather have a vocal enemy Amen. than a silent friend. Amen. Uh, Amen. And, and because not only, why did you say that? Because not only was his calling a struggle, his congregation stubborn, his course strenuous, but his comrades were slick. Okay, so you'll see it. So God put that up on the board for me. The new revised standard Bible in chapter 20, right after he's dealt with Verse 9 comes verse 20, 10. He says, For I hear many whisperings. Terror is all around. Yeah. Denounce him. Let's denounce him. All my close friends are watching and waiting for me to stop. Perhaps he can be enticed and we can prevail against him and take our revenge on him. Yeah. For these people, Jeremiah was saying, I'm resigning, Lord. Lord, you want me to help folk who are digging ditches for me. Folk who are just waiting to say, I told you he couldn't make it. Folk who are waiting to say, I told you, let that sinner close. Quit investing time and money in a dead organization. That agency isn't serving anybody. And I see a young man sitting here today that that agency's doors open is why he's here today. A young man who had to go through a difficult life to leave Haiti to come here. And now he shouldn't have to deal with the hatred of us. We should be here with open arms to support the process. Yeah. My calling a struggle. I told you I didn't want to do it. My congregation is stubborn. Folks that don't want to walk and work with me. 
They, and they tell me, you ain't none of my father. You don't tell me what to do. My course is strenuous. I hear you, Jeremiah. No wife, no children. Nobody when his back is hurt to rub his back. Nobody to tell him, you look like you need some assistance. I thank God for my wife. That when I had trouble on yesterday, she wouldn't fix the meal. Came and sat up in the room with me and said, if you're going to be in this room, I'm going to be with you. I understand that some of my comrades are slick. I'm dealing with folk today, and I just don't trust them. They tell me they're going to be there. They tell me they're going to help. But somehow, some way, they always find something else to do. And I, just like Jeremiah, I want to throw in my resignation and tell you I'm done. I'm quit. Lest I give in too soon, give up too soon. I'm glad that the text helped me out. I went back in Jeremiah 1 and 8, and I realized, he said, don't be afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. I'm glad that God will make a way out. When your calling becomes a struggle, when the folk around you, the congregation is stubborn, when the cross is strenuous, when your comrades are slick, what you going to do? Well, I went back up in the text and, and I began to do what I do. I looked at each word in the ninth verse. And when I got through, I realized, Sister Chill is just like your age. There are 44 words in the ninth verse. Y'all ain't going to pray with me. I said there are 44 words in the ninth verse. Those 44 words means 4 plus 4 is 8. So when your calling becomes a struggle preacher, when the congregation becomes stubborn preacher, when the course gets strenuous preacher, when your comrades are slick preacher, I got one more point for you and I'm out of here. My Christ is my savior. I'm glad that the 44 lets me know I got a new beginning today. In the eighth month on this sixth day, I dare you to stand and say, I got a new beginning. Christ is prepared to be your way maker. Some of y'all still sitting there, but you ought to understand that God set you up. He popped 44 words off for you, and he let you know that the greatest word in that text is but. The Bible says in Matthew 4 and 4, because that still equals eight. Yes, sir. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone. Yeah. But every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Yeah. Joshua 24 and 15 said, and if it seems evil unto oh, you yeah. to serve the Lord, choose you this day. Yeah. Whom you will serve. Whether the gods of your father the, that you served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorite in whose land you dwell. But as for me, my house, we will serve the Lord. Romans 6 and 23 says, for the way of the sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Yeah. I thank God for a contrasting conjunction yes, that has given me a new function. Yes, thank God, yeah. they said, yeah. but they that wait on the Lord yes, shall renew their strength. Yes, they shall mount up the wings of eagles. Yes. You don't hear me? Yes. They shall run and not be weary. Yeah. They shall walk yeah. and not faint. Yeah. How did I get here? Yeah. Well, I got here because I heard Isaiah say yeah. that the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me yeah. because he has anointed me to preach the good tidings. Yeah. Here you go, church, unto the meek. Yeah. He has sent me to bind up the broken heart. Yeah. He sent me to proclaim liberty. Yeah. You ought to holler yeah. with me yeah. to the captives. Yeah. He sent me yeah. to tell you 
sure that the opening of the prison for those that are bound, we got family members who are bound in sin. God told me to tell you that he's going to let them out, but you got to stay connected. You got to realize that I came to proclaim the acceptable year of the law and in the day of the vengeance of Christ and to comfort all of us who mourn. How did you get here? Well, I think you answered the call. Here it is. Jesus says, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will say I will give you rest. I want you to leave here knowing that God will provide a way for rest. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me yes. for I am meek and lowly in heart yes. and for my yoke is easy and my burden is light come on choir how did we get here cause we're answering the call I'm gone goodbye I'll see you later I want you to know how did we get here we came through by the way of Gethsemane yeah. you don't hear me when Jesus was ready to tend his resignation and he said father this is a bitter cup but not my will but thou will be done nevertheless do you know Jesus Mary's baby boy do you know Jesus Genesis creator Exodus deliverer Leviticus high priest numbers cloud and fire Deuteronomy eulogizer of Moses Joshua's captain of our salvation Judges lawgiver Luke's kinsman redeemer Samuel's prophet Chronicles reigning king Ezra scribe Nehemiah's rebuke Builder yeah. of the breach of yeah. Esther's Mordecai, yeah. Job's day spring, Psalms, uh, Shepherd, Proverbs, Wisdom, yeah. Ecclesiastes, Wisdom, Songs of Solomon, Love, Isaiah's Prince of oh, Peace. Yeah. You don't hear me? He's Jeremiah's weeping prophet, Ezekiel's weak in the middle of a wheel, Daniel's fourth man in the furnace, Hosea's faithful husband, you don't hear me, Joel's baptizer, Amos burden bearer, Obadiah's savior, Jonah's forgiven God, Micah's messenger. Nahum's avenger, Habakkuk's evangelist, Zephaniah's restorer, Haggai's cleansing fountain, Zachariah's faithful, Malachi's righteous, 